So uh, before we dive in, do we have any public comment on items not on the agenda? All right, seeing none, our first presenter is our very own John Hart. Hey, good morning, commissioners. Um, what I have for you this morning is um, surprisingly another subdivision improvements agreement and guarantee. And this one involves phase 2A of the Running W Ranch subdivision. Um, Running W Ranch subdivision is a 11 phase subdivision. There's 350 lots on 184 acres. The subdivision was given, um, originally given preliminary approval in August of 2005. Phases one and two have been platted and developed. And the, um, the developer is ready to um, file the final plat for phase 2A, which is a 14 lot phase of the subdivision. Um, the developer is Williams Development LLP. However, the improvements agreement that I have before you this morning for your consideration and action has been um, the, the guarantor of that agreement is ASJ Ventures uh, LLC. That is a Montana limited liability company made up of um, three partners. And they are under contract right now to purchase phase 2A from Williams Development, mm. but they cannot, the, the purchase can't be uh, consummated until there are legal descriptions for the lots in phase 2A. So the actual, uh, the actual transaction of property will not occur until the final plat has been filed. Um, ASJ Ventures, is is offering uh, well they're they're uh, guaranteeing the infrastructure let me back up the, the, there is $641,481 of infrastructure in phase 2A that has not been completed and approved um, given final inspection uh, mostly that is building um, another segment of Snapdragon Drive, but there's also quite a bit of sewer and water infrastructure that needs to be uh, installed. Our Public Works Department has approved the estimated probable cost of that, uh, that remaining infrastructure, including an extra 25% contingency um, and that, so the estimated probable cost of that infrastructure is $641,481. And that estimate was as of um, April 11th. So that was a couple of months ago. Um, I, I have some sense and some understanding that some of that infrastructure has already been completed, but I, I can't speak to that. Uh, completed in the subsequent two months, that is. Um, ASJ is um, is proposing to guarantee that infrastructure um, in two ways. They've submitted a letter of credit in the amount of $641,000 and $481. And they have also submitted um, a, a, a a third party agreement that is a fund management agreement. And, you know, I'm not a sophisticated developer, so I'll try to I'll try to summarize that fund management agreement as simply as I can. Yeah. Essentially what it does is it is it obligates ASJ Ventures upon owning the 14 lots that are phase 2A to borrow a significant amount of money of which 1.7 million will go into an escrow account that is managed by a third party fiduciary. And then of that 1.7 million, $641,481 of that amount is, um, is obligated in writing to go towards completion of phase 2A infrastructure. 
so we so we sort of have two layers of assurance with this particular um, uh, uh, improvements agreement. We have a letter of credit uh, in the full amount, and then we also have a an agreement that you know Missoula County isn't a party to that agreement, but um, it, it 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 shows that the, that there is going to be a financial arrangement, an escrow account managed by a fiduciary. Um, whereby ASJ is obligated under that agreement to put in the infrastructure. So that's what I have to say about this particular agreement. I reviewed it. I had some misgivings originally. I had several meetings with um, with ASJ principals, their attorney Ross Keough, um, Dustin uh, Dustin Hover from the WGM group, the the the. Um, the development group here in town that is is um, <laughs> is working with ASJ, and I've come to a level of comfort where I can recommend to you that uh, that Missoula County enter into this improvements agreement. But I also asked um, I also asked some of the principals and uh, and Ross Keo and others to be on this call in case you had questions about the arrangement or they wanted to add to or clarify <clears throat> some information that I've that I presented. So I'll I'll let them do that if they so choose or let you guys ask questions um, about this particular arrangement. So John, thank you for that uh, explanation and I really appreciate your thoroughness and uh, working with all the partners and kind of digging into this because it does seem a, a bit unconventional, but I really appreciate the the two layers of protection, the letter of credit and also this a somewhat complicated real estate transaction where uh, where it sounds like there's money going to be borrowed and built into that is the 641,000 that'll cover the infrastructure costs for making sure these improvements happen. Without these improvements, there would be no uh, phase 2A of this subdivision, if I understand it right. So I appreciate all that. The only comment I would have uh, beyond thanking you for your thoroughness is that this is indicative, if not emblematic, of the complexity of these really large subdivision deals. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because there have been some comments in the press as of late that it can take up to seven and a half years to get a deal done. And it seems like the commentators were attempting to blame local government for this. And what I'd like to do is extract blame away entirely and say, this is not about local government. These timeframes are because of the complexity of these deals. We're talking about a tremendous amount of money and tremendous amounts of infrastructure that have to be built and really complicated financial constructions to actually facilitate this type of work. And this is this happens irrespective of the, the few months it takes to get a subdivision uh, approved. It takes years to make these things happen, and this is emblematic of that. And what we're doing here is approving something in short order and facilitating what is actually something that's really time consuming and complex. Did you catch oh. that, Martin? <laughs> Was that just too many words, Martin? I got it. That's great. Well done. Ross, Thank you. I'll probably <laughs> say it much more tightly than I just did. Well, does Keo or Hobart want to add to that at all? Uh, yes, commissioners, and once again, thank you for you know working with and with us and John on this. So, uh, you know, if I could, can I share my screen? Is that something Please. that I'm allowed to do here? And I'm going to try to share the correct screen. Um, One sec, Ross. I just have to make you a presenter, okay. and you should be able to now. Um, someone will. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, thank you. So I'm just going to show you the plat because I think it's helpful um, as to what's what's happening here. I think it provides a little context to this project. And Dustin, if you're if you're unmuted and you want to jump in here, that's that'd be great. Um, Dustin's the planner on the project with the gym group. Um, I like doing real estate work as an attorney because I get to work with with folks like Jason Suchecki and Alan Herder on the line who, you know, have a, have a vision for a property and and then. We also get a look at maps, uh, which is one of the, the fun parts. So can everyone see the, the Rain W phase plat over here? It's pretty yeah. small, but I can see it. Yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll kind of zoom in. So I think this really explains what's going on. So you can see this kind of, this all exists, right? Snapdragon comes up here and just sort of ends. Um, 
And what you know, and I, I really want to applaud your office. I think I think where the the real innovation came from here was that this phase two A wasn't originally in the plan. You know, there was there's a bunch more that's envisioned to happen on this side. And so what this will do is that 650 that Dustin that that John talked about. We're going to complete this stretch right here. So we're able to to close off complete a critical piece of infrastructure, and then with just that little bit of road, able to open up all of these lots um, for single family homes as part of an adjacent existing subdivision. Uh, so that, so I, I think just want to make sure that everyone, everyone sees that. And then the process here is something we see a lot, which is that ASJ is going to borrow the money. The money will become available into this escrow fund uh, nearly, you know, probably potentially next week. Uh, they'll start on these improvements. Once the improvements are completed, then the plat can be issued. They can close on the sale and they can start construction. Uh, and ASJs really condensed their time frame, uh, so hopefully they'll be able to have uh, a lot of this in place by August and instructions to be as soon as August. I, I do think when we talk about sort of deadlines, one of the things that would have been really helpful to us um, as we try to condense that seven months is perhaps some parameters from the county about what they expect to see for financial assurance. Uh, we were kind of you know relying on Dustin and his team from what the county's seen before. Uh, but, you know, some some clear guideposts about what's uh, understood as acceptable financial assurance would have allowed us to come to the county with a package a lot sooner uh, and and maybe even shaved another month or two off, off the time process. So that that would be something that that might be helpful on the next one. Um, and we are we're going to be looking at a much larger uh, potential subdivision. It'll be further on the side of this uh, one that I think will be. We won't have the tolerance to maybe take down quite as much money. And so developing a real clear, adequate process for the county on financial assurance, uh, and what sorts of letters of credit or other sorts of agreements are acceptable, uh, helps to signal to us early uh, the, the bars and the goals that we need to do as part of the development process. So those would be my comments. Uh, if you have anything else, uh, Jason's available, uh, the developer. I don't know, Jason, if you want to say a few words, uh, but otherwise, we're just real excited to be moving forward with this project. I think you did a good job, Ross. Thanks, Jason. So, and, Ross, the, the standard that we've been going by, at least since I've been here, is a letter of credit from the bank, which doesn't seem too obscure or difficult to wrap one's head around. So, I mean, first of all, that that's not articulated in, in the commission. You know, you know, and I want to I want to bifurcate this conversation from you know, forward looking about what we can do together and collaborate from, you know, the approval that's at hand. And um, I guess I'm, I'm more than happy to speak with any of the commissioners, uh, you know, in any context that makes sense about, I think, what would be helpful. Uh, but I'm, I'm really glad we were able to work out an agreement uh, to move this project forward. So, John Hart, is there something in the future, I mean, that we clear parameters guidelines what what um ross is asking for well there there may be commissioner vero um i do think our subdivision regulations are are fairly detailed i i think though there's there isn't um you know there there isn't a signal in there that when um a letter of credit comes from an outside you know outside the local community financial institution or lender that um, that there might be some heightened scrutiny, which is which is all that I did in this case. I, I looked at the letter of credit and I said, OK, it's you know, it's not from First Security Bank or First Interstate Bank or Trail West or Stockman's, you know, our local bank. What what kind of an institution is this? I did a little due diligence on it. And um, you know, then and then I talked to uh, I talked to the gentleman on the call here today about some of my misgivings, and we and we worked through a way to uh, to make this work. Uh, so maybe maybe there's a way to to add some clarity to our subdivision regulations the next time we tweak these. Um, but uh, but but you know that there may not be. Just it just may be something that. Uh, yeah. A case like this that is really an outlier, uh, we will just have to work through a process and it'll take an extra couple, two, three weeks. 
I mean, an extra couple, two, three weeks to do diligence on sums this large doesn't seem a problem. Yeah, I didn't. I mean, I felt like it was the least I could do uh, on behalf of the public. All right, thanks. Well, I, I move that the board approve improvements uh, agreement and guarantee for running W phase 2A subdivision. Great, uh, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Thanks, John. Thanks, yeah, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you to everybody on the call. All right, next up is uh, Shane Stack to talk about uh, build. Good morning, commissioners. Let me share my screen. Uh, this is just a another temporary construction easement for construction of the build project. Give you a sense of where this is at. Uh, can you see my screen OK? Yes. All right. So kind of the, the larger uh, build project area, I'll just zoom in. So the, the location we're talking about is between uh, Flynn Lane and West Broadway on the proposed Mary Jane uh, component. Uh, it's on the east side. Uh, let me just kind of show you uh, another image, if you will. Kind of gives you a sense of, of where it's at. So from Flynn Lane up to up to Broadway, it's just a, a essentially a 10 foot contemporary construction easement good for two years. Uh, it's between uh, Missoula County and uh, Edgel and uh, sorry, Edgel LLC and Miramont Holdings LLC. So um, that's the kind of the basic information and we'll use that space to, to build uh, curb gutter sidewalks and things like that. It just gives us the room to get forms and things like that in the ground. So any questions? Nope. I just lost my. OK, here we go. Um, I move that we approve the temporary construction easement. Great. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thanks, Aye. Shane. Glad to see this moving forward. Yep. thanks. All right, next up is Juniper. Um, Commissioner Slotnick, sorry, this one is actually going to be moved to a future meeting. We're not sure okay. when yet, but I think we can go ahead and move on to number four. All right, great. So uh, Jason Hauser to talk to us about Dude Solutions. So this is just a follow up from what you guys signed the other uh, last week. I'd forgotten to attach the um, description of work that they'll be doing for us. So basically this just describes the work that you guys have already approved. <laughs> okay. Well, that's really easy then. That's a pretty simple one today. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I, so no money, no nothing. Just tells you what they what they're gonna do for us. I move that the board approve uh, the chair to sign the facility condition assessment proposal between the county and Dude Solutions. All right. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> So next up is some correspondence and somebody going to speak to us about this letter of support for uh, Tracy Stone Manning to run the BLM. Sure, I can speak to it just really briefly. Great, um, thanks. So yeah, so Tracy Stone Manning, as you guys know, is uh, nominated to be the director of the Bureau of Land Management. I believe her hearing is today. Um, so she had requested this letter that we send in support to the leaders of that Senate committee. And so I, we signed it on Thursday or Friday, so this is just noticing it, but it's in their hands now. Great. I'm just thrilled uh, that we could do this. So thank you. Yeah. And she's uh, a, a fantastic candidate and I can't, um, yeah, the sentence could hardly be more qualified person to lead the agency and she's as spectacular as the public lands and water she'll oversee thanks allison there you go. Yeah. that's good she's stuff allison really proud yeah. all right uh discussion on upcoming board meetings review of meetings etc
have anything on? Uh, I don't have anything. I was looking to see if where our, our cat herders are. <laughs> I think we're done then. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I see Chris's icon. No, I was going to say, yeah, no, commissioners, I, I don't have anything for you. Just a reminder, though, for folks that uh, budgeting season has started. Um, and so you'll be having some public budget meetings coming up uh, in the not too distant future in June and July around that. And then final budget adoption in late August, early September. Great. That's good. That's good to let people know. All right. Well, if nothing else, then I do believe we are done. Wow, well done. 24 yeah. minutes. <laughs> Great. Love that. <laughs>